Hi, I'm Joan from the Hudson Area Library. I'm here today video chatting with Leela Albert. Leela is the director of Hudson's Historic Octagon House and she also keeps backyard chickens. I've asked her to share with us her experience in keeping backyard chickens. Good morning, Leela. How are you? Good, good morning, thank you. Um, I'm just here doing my morning things at, at uh, our property. I have a little seven acre place in between Baldwin and Hammond. Um, I'll switch it around so everybody can see what I'm talking about and the chickens eventually. There, so this is my place. My house is, is there. And this is my view every morning. This is our vegetable garden. The chickens like to get in there and eat things that they're not supposed to. <laughs> that's, that's their job. Their job is to eat my stuff and my job is to try to give them enough treats so they don't have to eat my stuff. We've got a mutual understanding wherein they always win. <laughs> um, so I make my way over to the coop. We'll follow my shadow here. <laughs> I see that. <laughs> I know it's much better than rain, and uh, we'll maybe start to hear some some chicken noises. Um, this is where they live. Ooh, they're a little difficult to make out. But here we have the chickens. This one we call her Lucy. We named them. Um, and this one, well, we would like to be original. Her name is Chicken. Hi, Chicken. <laughs> Behind her, we have little Miss Phoebe. She's running away because she's afraid. Um, she has a bouffant hairdo. It's really great. Come on, wake up, wake up. There. A little bit more skittish than the older, bigger ones because they've not been here as long. There she goes, run, 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 run. <laughs> and so they're always in a hurry to get out every morning. And this is where I always give them snacks. So they're wondering, well, where's our snacks? And uh, I'll just bring this in. You'll get a view for a minute of the coop without any chickens. But when they hear the creaking of the snack door, Usually they come running in. Let's we'll see if it works. And there she comes, telling everybody, making her noises. It's time for snacks. So then we open our bin. You can't see the bin, but you can see here, this is their snacks. We've got a combo of Meal worms and sunflower seeds. Ooh, yummy. And here comes another one. We call him Joey because we named the other one Phoebe. And it just seemed fitting. So now we will sprinkle some snacks. And they come out and they tell each other, hey, this is where the snacks are. And we got to save just a little bit because we still have one hen who is broody. So I'm going to set this down, open the door. And here she is. Good morning. And she raises up like that because she thinks I might be a rooster and that way he can fertilize the eggs. She's been sitting in here for a little over three weeks trying to hatch babies. I don't know for sure that she's fertile, so we don't know if she's just wasting her time or if we'll see baby chicks out of this booster if you want to hatch chickens from the eggs. If you don't care about hatching chickens or you just want the eggs to eat, well, then you don't need a rooster. The rooster's job is to protect the hens and to fertilize the eggs and that way you can have baby chicks. Um, I think that it would be a great opportunity and a tremendous amount of, of interesting and learning fun to um, watch 
this hen hatched some chickens and see her raise them. So we're gonna go ahead and keep our little rooster and hope that these two can get that job done. Leela, I have a question. Yeah. How long does it take for eggs to hatch? How long will you let her sit there with those eggs? About, 20, about 21 days, three weeks. Okay. Um, but she's sitting on a little pile of, he's talking. Is that a rooster? That's the rooster, yeah. Um, she's sitting on a little pile of eggs. This is where we keep the food. Okay. Um, so she's sitting on a little, a little pile of eggs. Um, and they're, they're not all laid at once. Uh, chickens lay one egg every one to three days, but she's sitting on a pile of about a dozen of them. Only, only one of the eggs is hers. Uh, so I don't know if any of those eggs are fertile, if they're all fertile or only some of them. So she's been... <laughs> They, they communicate, these chickens. <laughs> um, she's been sitting for about three weeks, and so I just, uh, we have a light inside the coop, and I've been turning that on so that she knows when it's daylight and when it's nighttime. Otherwise, she'll just sit in there. Uh... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> She'll, she'll sit in there 24 hours a day uh, for 21 days and even longer trying to hatch those eggs. But if they're not fertile, well, then she's just wasting her time. Um, so I'm going to start now kind of uh, taking her out of the nesting box. She won't be happy about it, and she's, she'll make her way back in there fairly quickly. But if she doesn't have any fertile eggs, then um, I want to encourage her to get back out with her flock and live more of a life than just sitting in a box. So that's why I'll, I'll start taking her out. Um, and also then I can see if, if, um, if there's anything happening with those eggs, we, I can look for, for cracking to see what's happening. Um, but here, now that those ones have gone away, I can introduce you to these ones. These are our new ones. This one, they're not named yet, but they do have breeds. And uh, I can go inside in a minute, but then they'll get kind of nervous. Um, it might be difficult to see through the wire. So we'll go in. These ones we got just a day or two ago the white one with the funny feathers on top. That's a Polish. Um, they're called Polish apparently because um, they're from Europe and their feathers, the way they come off of their head big like that, reminded people of the helmets that Polish soldiers would wear is the story that I read. The other one, the white and black, um, that's a silver laced wine dot. And the little one walking around in the chicken feed is a golden laced wine dot, but all of its feathers aren't quite in, so it's difficult to make out the color. And they are still quite skittish because they're new to this place. And so when I follow them around like this, they get a little bit nervous. So I try not to do it too much, but I'd like you to just see who they are and what they're about and they get really anxious to get outside. But we keep them in this second coop because, well, we want them to know that this is, this is their home and that ensures they won't run away before they know where home is. Um, they're kept in a separate coop because they could have an illness or a disease that we don't know about coming from a different home. So we keep them in a separate place for a couple of weeks to make sure that they're healthy. 
um, and so that they know that this is their home. After they've been in here for a couple of weeks and they get comfortable and they're not quite so skittish and, and jumpy, then we'll come in after um, sundown when it's dark out because then they'll be on the ladder that you can see in the corner. They'll be roosting. That's what chickens do. They roost when they're sleeping. Um, if you think of a chicken out in the natural world before humans um, interceded, they would have gone up onto tree branches in the, um, when it was nighttime to kind of stay safe. So the roost mimics that natural setting and that's why they sleep on a roost at night. So they're very docile when they're sleeping. Um, they're very hard sleepers. They'll be, their eyes will be open, um, but they're just very calm. So it's easier to pick them up off of the roost and then we'll bring them into the other coop where we were before and we'll put them on the roost in there because that's when all of the chickens are docile and um, they don't really care about much of anything. And then in the morning when they all wake up, they realize that there's more chickens, but they just kind of assume, well, gosh, you're here now. You must have been here all along. Obviously, you're a part of my family. <laughs> it's like a, 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 a sneak in and grab kind of trick. And that's the method I read about years ago. It's a method we use, and so far, it has worked. Um, one more thing we do for the new chickens when they come here. Um, these ones, they're, they're called pullets. A pullet is a chicken that has all of its regular feathers, so it can be outside. It doesn't have to be under a heat lamp, but they've not yet started laying eggs. Um, that'll happen somewhere between six and eight months of age is when they start laying eggs. Um, when they're first hatched, they have different feathers than what you see now. You'll notice the littler one, her colors are harder to make out because her new feathers, they're there, but they're still coming in. Um, but they, they are there, so they don't, they don't need to have a heat lamp on. Otherwise, up here on the ceiling, we have a heat lamp and I could have turned that on. But these are old enough, they have their feathers, so we don't have to do that. I mentioned one other thing that we do, and that is their water dish. When they first come here or um, when it's really, really hot out, um, chickens, are, they undergo a lot of stress. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll make them some electrolytes, just like just like humans, when we're playing sports or something in the hot weather, we're using a lot of our energy, our bodies are under stress, we'll go buy um, electrolyte kind of beverages. It's the same thing for chickens, only with chickens you don't have to get a, a, a label on there that says Gatorade or Chicken Aid. You can do that. They have stuff like that available. You just, it's powder, you mix it in with the water, but it, if you have a mixture of water and sugar and salt, it does the exact same thing. So we mix up a little bit of sugar and salt in their water and give that to them for the first few days that they're here. Or if it's really, really hot outside for a long time, um, that puts them under stress. Or if there's an attack by a predator and they all get stressed that way, um, then we'll do the same thing. It just kind of helps their bodies to get back into normal. And you can see now they're scratch, scratch, scratching away. That's what they do all day long. They roam around, they scratch in the dirt. They're trying to find little bugs to eat. <coughs> um, that's, that's kind of their job. <coughs> Excuse me, I should explain a little bit. You might see, well, okay, what's this big box in the corner that looks like a barricade? Well. Um, <clears throat> with the chickens, we have to give them chicken feed, and then it gets out on the ground, and we had, we have winter in Wisconsin, so what happens is other rodents, other critters, find that feed. They know where it is, and so then they always want to come in here 
and share the chicken feed. And I can tell you, um, rats in particular eat a lot of chicken feed. And so we've been dealing with rats all winter long. Part of the problem is that my cat is now in retirement. So he doesn't catch critters like that anymore. He used to, um, but he no longer does. So we're kind of in a in-between phase. We don't want to get new barn cats while our old cat who gave his whole life to us, keeping us free of critters and rodents, um, he's too old to fight. So if we got new cats while he's still around, well, they would beat him up in his own backyard and we figure that's awfully mean. So we're gonna let him enjoy his retirement for a year or two and we'll deal with the rats. I have to catch them and barricade things up rather unsuccessfully, as you might be able to see. There's a little hole there. Well, the rats did that. So they come in and out and then they like to share the chicken feed. Now, if I lift up this box, this was intended as a place where the chickens could go and, um, you know, cuddle in at night when they have to be in quarantine away from the rest of the flock for whatever reason. And you can see the hole there. Well, that's from a rat. It dug its way in from the outside of the barn into the floor here. And I was trying to be very clever by setting my barricade with this little trap to catch that rat. Um, but sometimes they outsmart me. Um, in fact, most of the winter they've been outsmarting me. <laughs> so my attempts at keeping them out have been well unsuccessful at times. But we keep trying because then when they come in, we have to make sure that they're not leaving droppings in the chicken feed and the chicken water. Mm. Otherwise, the chickens will eat that and then they can get sick. And you can see too here that the wood is kind of scratched away. That's from the rats. They eat the wood so that they can make passageways. Just like, I don't know if you can see on that board or not, but they eat away at the wood, making their way in and out. So I make these barricades to try to keep them out. Hmm. It works a little bit, but not entirely. Um, we're back in the other coop now, and I mentioned a roost. So this is the roost where the birds, a lot of them often prefer to sleep. It's just an old ladder that we found at, uh, oh, one of those um, boutique shops, uh, Paisley Cow over in Baldwin. Um, it's just a cheap old find. A lot of times people will bring these home and, and lean them up against a building and, and put flowers on them. Well, my husband saw it and thought, hey, I bet the chickens would like that. So he bought it and brought it home. And uh, now that's where the chickens sleep, is on this ladder. They have this nice little roost in here where we saw the, the, the nesting chicken earlier. And it's, it's even heated. It's attached to a heated building. And that little hole that you see, well, that's an exhaust fan and it blows the heat out here. So on the coldest, coldest day of winter, um, it's still about 10 degrees above zero in here, which is perfectly fine for chickens, but they have this great heated space. Light bulb is on so that she knows it's daylight. They've got the roosting bars in the corner. Don't mind the mess. Chickens are messy. <laughs> um, but even so, they prefer to sleep out in the cold on the ladder. And even though we have four nesting boxes every single net or chicken that's that's laying eggs wants to be right here with this one in this nesting box they always have to all use the exact same one and now she's in there so what they'll do is they'll come and they'll lay eggs right beside her like this one and eventually she'll tuck it under herself with her beak so that she can keep it warm and she'll take her beak and she will 
turn those eggs every day to make sure that that they're you know moving around and not just sitting in one position um, I don't know why they do that or why that needs to be done I just know that they do and it does um, one other thing I can show you is we have our eggshells this is a jar filled with eggshells I save them after we eat the eggs I crumble them up and I feed them back to the chickens because that makes their eggs stronger, the shells harder. Otherwise, um, you can get soft shells. Um, as far as the feed goes, we saw some of that. There's, oh, the mealworms and the feed. The feed I get from a friend of mine. She's a I can't remember exactly her name, um, Holly, but she's like a nutritionist for animals. <clears throat> she makes sure that animals are healthy. She goes around to all of the farms in the region, taking care of um, cattle and um, making sure that, that we all have milk to drink and pudding to eat in the end. But anyway, she, she provides the feed for me. Um, it's, it's made by her company, by the mills, um, and it has different mixtures of, of things that uh, keep those chickens healthy. Here we have chicken. Hi, chicken. Hi. I don't know if you can notice or not, but um, she has, she's blind in one eye. Or a chicken fight or something happened one day when I wasn't around, and uh, one eye is always half closed and she can't see out of it so she just has the one eye um, but pretty much they're always always uh, roaming around the yard scratching for bugs um, I mentioned predators a few times because that is one of the concerns with raising chickens we'll see if we can't find them here we found them um, one of the concerns is those predators uh, it can be a fox or a hawk or an eagle or <clears throat> a dog from, from town. That's town over there. And we've had dogs that have found their way here. And when, when a dog finds a flock of chickens, well, they think they've just entered into a candy store. And they just, uh, yeah, they, <laughs> the dogs have a lot of fun. The chickens, do not have any fun um, because unfortunately the dogs think that the chickens are both snack and chewy toy so they they can get pretty mangled and then we have to care for them and that's one other time when the chickens would go into quarantine so that they can heal uh, without the other chickens kind of pecking at them because what happens when you have a flock of chickens is that if there's if there's a weak one um it can happen that the others in the flock will essentially peck them to death um, because if you have a weak chicken in your flock well they can be a danger to your flock they can um, be an invitation for predators i don't know if you can see or not but they're on warm days they go under this trailer because they like to scratch around in the dirt, give themselves a dirt bath, stay shaded from the sun, stay nice and cool, and then they'll come out and they'll roam a little bit or they'll eat on the grass or the flowers nearby. Um, and then they go back under here and they've got water nearby so that they can get to their water whenever they want it. And then they'll go back under the trailer and all hang out together. <clears throat> so I think they've got a pretty good life here. We try to make sure that they're happy um, so that they give us lots of eggs. Right now, we're not getting eggs all of the time because sometimes um, I get out here a little bit later than I would like to. And so the nesting chicken, the one who's sitting on the eggs, well, she'll take them over and scoot them under herself and you have to pick your battles in life, and wrestling with chick with chickens is not often choose um, because we still have 
oh, over a dozen eggs in the fridge. So we're set up for quite some time. Um, and we're, we're happy here. We can hear our, our rooster crowing some more. Um, I don't know. Uh, have I, have I covered everything? Have I left anything out? Do you have any questions? No, I think you're pretty good. I think you've told us a lot. I guess how long have you had chickens? We have been raising chickens here. Oh gosh, I don't know. Um, five to seven years. Okay. I think. Yeah, the, the, the first year we ordered a straight run from a hatchery, which means that um, you, you don't know what you're getting. It could be all males, it could be all females, it could be a mix of both. I thought, well, it's probably going to be a mix of both. So we'll get some of the males, the roosters, and once they reach the adult age, we can process them um, for food, just, you know, like you're going out for a chicken dinner, um, only, only we take care of uh, ending their life and, and dressing them, um, taking all of the feathers off and, and uh, putting them into the freezer until we need food. Um, and that first year, well, we were quite surprised to find out that um, out of, oh, what did I get? I think a dozen chickens, only we had one, one female. Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the rest, the rest, um, it's quite fun though to watch um, a bunch of baby roosters, um, cockerels, they um, like to rough house just like, like most young boys do. So we would set up chairs in the yard and watch those chickens play together. <laughs> um, <laughs> we ended up keeping one of the roosters because I, I like I said, all of long, I've just so that we could hatch our own chickens. Um, but what happens is when roosters become adults, well, they, they realize they're purpose in life, their duty, their job is to protect their flock. And so people coming into the area where their flock is, the roosters will attack. And we have people who come to visit. Um, my husband, he's in construction. So, you know, there's, there's workers who come here. It's his giant work van. Um, and it's kind of a hassle when People are trying to go about their their day to day life, and you're getting attacked by a rooster. <laughs> so, um, those those yeah those roosters were all turned into food. Even the one that I tried to keep because again he was very very good at his job. Poor thing. Um, so he became somebody's dinner. We've tried a couple of other times, <clears throat> but the roosters always ended up being a bit too aggressive, especially. Um, when my grandmother would come here and stay with <clears throat> stay with us in the summer, she was she was old, elderly, and so um, her and roosters didn't do very well together. Um, I was always worried that she would lose her footing, and she was always worried that she was going to get pecked mm -hmm. and that they'd they'd hurt her. So. Um, those roosters didn't make it, and I decided, well, that's just it. I'm not going to have a rooster until I can find a miniature rooster. Mm -hmm. And so last year, um, you know, it was uh, early spring this year. I saw an ad on uh, Facebook Marketplace for uh, somebody who was looking to rehome the pair that we have, the the miniatures, the rooster, and the hen. Uh, Joey and Phoebe so that rooster he's just so little that even if he was attacking somebody well it, it's, he's not going to really accomplish much just because he's so little so um so we've got our rooster that we're going to keep here now and and I'm hopeful that eventually we'll have some fertilized eggs and and we'll have a hen like we have now who wants to hatch those eggs um I don't know if that's going to be right now or Maybe if it'll be later, but I think eventually it's going to happen. And I have my little rooster who's going to make all kinds of noise, making his, his sounds that, that I like. 
Um, so um, eventually I, I think it will work out. <laughs> so it's you and the cats, you, your husband, the cat, and the chickens. Right, right. Um, we do have an upstairs though. Uh, we rent that out to a very good friend of ours and she also has two cats. Okay. Um, they're not, you know, they'll do some hunting, but they're not barn cats. Once our cat has gone, then we'll get a couple of barn cats and uh, they'll, they'll do the part of keeping, um, keeping those critters down and uh, not being quite so invasive. You know, I, I always remind people that life is a balance um, and, and uh, death is a part of it. Um, and if nothing else, it's a good reminder of what we should be grateful for and happy about while well, we have the great opportunity to be walking the earth. Um, so if it's, people, so if people were to, so if people want to keep chickens, how much mm -hmm. land, I mean, you can do this just in your, in a smaller yard than you have. Oh right? yeah. Yeah. Yep, chickens don't take much space at all. Um, I, you know, it's not much. I think it's, uh, gosh, like two or three square feet is all you need for a chicken. I mean, you, their nesting box doesn't have to be much, much bigger than a shoe box. Sure. And, you know, they need some kind of shelter mm -hmm. so that, uh, you know, they can be safe from predators and they can get out of bad weather. Um, but really you don't have to have anything. I, I, I have a friend who lives out in Oregon. Um, it's not necessarily an urban area, uh, but she does live in a populated area and they just they just run loose in her yard. She's got a little shelter for them. She feeds them, and and she knows where they lay. So that's that's about it. Um, otherwise, you can go to Fleet Farm. You can buy a little chicken coop for, gosh, I think a hundred dollars, and it's it's big enough for a couple of chickens. And if you have just a couple of of chickens that are females, hens, you'll you'll get your eggs you know, one every day or two. And um, yeah, really that's it. I mean, if here, this is just one part of our yard, but it's, it's, it's not very big. And if you just had the little chicken coop, it's probably, I don't know, um, five feet tall. And once you cage in the bottom so that they've got a place to kind of roam around and scratch in, in the grass or the dirt. Um, it's, it's maybe 10 or 12 feet long by about three or four feet wide. That's, that's all the bigger of the space you, you really need to have. Um, so what, I guess three or four feet by like 10 or 12 feet, you know, it's not much space, but a person would have to check with, um, their local, um, government whether you're in a, a city or a village or or a town to find out what the rules are most of the the townships um are, are pretty lenient because you're in the country you're not you know as you can see there's there's no neighbors that i'm gonna bother my neighbors over there um are cows so <laughs> they don't they don't care if, if a chicken's clucking around in my yard but when you live in a, in a populated area, you want to make sure that when you have those chickens, they're not going to be bothering other people, especially if there's a rooster. That's usually what you'll find in a lot of populated areas is that um, there will be an ordinance that says absolutely no roosters just because they're always crowing. Um, you know, in, in the cartoons, they always crow at sunrise. Well, that's not necessarily true. They, they, they crow every time the wind blows, I think. Um, <laughs> I don't, a lot of times I don't know the rhyme or the reason why they're doing it, but um, you know, they'll crow to communicate with their flock. They'll say, hey, it's, it's, you know, it's time to wake up. That's the one in the morning. And then 
when there's food around, okay, they're going to make their noise again to let those other birds know, hey, there's food. Or when they're moving around, they're going to crow so that all the, the other birds know, okay, it's time to move around. We got to do what he says because that rooster, he's the leader of the flock. It's his job to keep them all in order, keep them in line, keep them protected. Um, and if he senses danger, if, if, if there's a sudden wind or if there's a dog barking or if there's a hawk overhead, whatever it might be, he's going to let them know. And when you spend enough time around them, um, they do have different noises they make for different situations. Um, so it's what they're doing is they're communicating with each other. If a person was going to want to start raising chickens, the first thing they should do is check with their local government, find out what the ordinances are for raising chickens. Um, if there are any, sometimes they're not, and then it's, it's up to you to present to your local government the reasons why you feel like it should be allowed. Um, do some research. There's, there's websites, Backyard Chickens is one. Um, there's another one, I can't remember the name of it, Wisconsin Chicken or something, but if you just do a search on the internet for Backyard Chickens or Wisconsin Chickens, you're going to find all kinds of resources telling you how to get started, what to do. That's, that's, you know, kind of how I did it. I, um, I have friends in other places who were raising chickens and, and recommended it. And I just like the idea of knowing where my food comes from, what my food is made of, and also knowing that the animals providing my food have been cared for in a, a, a humane and responsible way. So I'm ensuring the food that I eat um, is the best that it can be and that those animals lived the best life possible. Um, and there's, there's a lot of resources out there. So really, I mean, the internet will, will provide endless, endless uh, reading on the subject. Um, and then, you know, just, just ask around. Uh, chances are, a person interested will have a friend who knows something about it, a friend who um, grew up in that situation, or a friend who's in the agricultural industry. Um, you know, there's, there's great resources there. And then really it's just a matter of, of getting the chickens. Um, you can order through a hatchery. There's lots of hatcheries. You can, it's, 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 it's like a mail order catalog. You, you pick the chicken that you want um, or the, you know, the, the variety, the breed. There's just lots of breeds. Um, and then again, the, the breeds will determine whether or not the chicken is docile or maybe they're more aggressive. Maybe they want to roam around or maybe they prefer to be enclosed. Like when you're in a a more of a populated area. Some are little miniatures, like my little rooster and hen. Um, they're called bantams. They're very small. They don't get very big at all, so they're very manageable. Um, then you have your standard breeds, which are, you know, the ones that, that you saw that I have also, some of those. And then there's the the brahmas the the large breeds um that get they can get very very large um those chickens can be bigger than some small dogs um and and then the breed too can determine what the feather patterns are um i mean that's that's a whole another direction that people will go into when they're raising chickens is they'll raise them simply for the beauty of their markings, um, how pretty they look with their different colored feathers, and they'll bring them and display them at fairs. Um, you know, a lot of, a lot of kids with, um, with 4-H, organizations like that will, will encourage kids to do this because it's a way that um, one can learn discipline and responsibility and respect and uh and and also learn how to care and and nurture for for another living thing otherwise there's there's um there's 
sale days when you can go to um, different feed stores will have chickens on hand and you can go and look at them and say, oh, look at that fuzzy little yellow, yellow one. I'm going to take that one home. Or, oh, look at there's a little fuzzy white one. Oh, that one has a fun little stripe. So you can go and pick a number of them um, and uh, raise them that way. Or, you know, there's different people around who hatch them and, and sell them once they're a little bit older. And so far that's worked out for me because then I don't have to <clears throat> care for the babies, which require a different kind of care. Do you have any other questions? I'm drawing a blank. Um, no, it's pretty good. I think maybe, I don't know if you can hear this, but I have a pet bird and it's being quite noisy. So, um, Oh, I never did hear it background. until now. Yeah. <laughs> I know how dirty birds are, I guess, because like I have a pet bird and I, so I know chickens must involve a, quite a bit of cleaning. Like you have to sweep out the coop. Do you have to clean? Yeah. It out well, what we've done is, um, and I can walk back there too. Um, what we've done is put sand in our chicken coop. Okay. Um, well, it's in the, the, the run area. The area where they run around is called mm -hmm. the run. Mm -hmm. um, so ours is filled with sand. And I have a rake, just a, 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 a you know, leaf and grass rake. Mm -hmm. that yeah, I rake. In there. yeah, I rake out the, the coop with that. And okay. I use all of that debris, all of that waste then I use it in my garden or when I, when I plant uh, new plants, like mm -hmm. these here are new. So you can use that waste as a fertilizer because it's a mix of, you know, little baby chicken manure and, uh, and sand. So our, our soil here is very thick. Um, so that sand is helpful to make it, uh, it, it drains better the water doesn't hold on to that moisture as long and it's uh, better for when you're growing plants okay so yeah so I use that waste in there um, every now and then not very often um, I should probably do it more but uh, I've talked to the chickens and I've asked them if they mind and and I believe they said no we don't care so <laughs> so so I don't, I don't take a hose to it very often, um, but I'll show you. We're getting back to the chicken coop. Um, every now and then I'll go in when all of the chickens are out and I'll actually wash down the walls. As you can tell, it's, it's due. It's, it's needed because she's dirty, ugly. Um, so I'll change out all of this bedding. It's, it's just shavings, pine shavings, but that goes into the garden too, or the compost pile. Um, and when my husband built this for me, um, he lined it with, with dairy board so that I could hose it down really easy. Um, it, you know, is just the way that, that we put it together. Um, so yeah, I, I rake this out, this run area, oh, every other week or so, just to, to clean it up. When we start to get low in sand, I'll go and get a low, load of sand and shovel it in here. Um, and then um, in the, the coop, or the, yeah, the, the coop with the, the nesting boxes and the roost area, oh, I'll clean out that, that every, other month or so with with fresh bedding and as far as the walls um, that's not very often I'm not a wall scrubber and they're really messy really quickly yeah so um, that gets done probably once a year I would I would say spring cleaning but, right right spring cleaning yeah. otherwise yeah. we just uh, we try to keep them happy they look like they have a good life. Yeah, well, I hope so. We try. <laughs> yeah. So maybe um, maybe we'll check back with you and uh, yeah. see if you have babies. And Yeah, I'll uh, remember that if we do. I'll, I'll try to remember. 
to and there's, a, uh, there's an option for people to put comments on YouTube so maybe if they have questions um, mm -hmm. they could write those in the comments and we could figure out a way to respond to that so that would be yeah cool. I don't know if, if you can put a, an email address you I mean you'd be welcome go ahead and to put mine or email your, if you want yeah go ahead you yeah um, or if you want them to go through the the library um, you know whatever you think is is best would be fine with me but um, yeah I'm more than happy to you know to do whatever I can I think it's I think it's good for people, you know, to, to, to see different ways of doing things, especially kids that, you know, are grow up in the city and, and don't have a way to, to do that. Um, I'll switch you around. You might be bored seeing my yard by now. <laughs> um, nice but yeah, though. yeah. I'm sorry. It's a nice yard. Oh, well, I like it. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much for doing this and yeah, my uh, pleasure. enjoy those chickens and we will talk again soon.